So I had just gotten to Afghanistan in um, early December of 2012. I'm in the helicopter and we had just taken off about 30 seconds ago. And all of a sudden, uh, my, an E5 that I work with, Sergeant Pagani, leans over to me and he's like, Sir, we're hit! And then next thing I know, all of a sudden, I'm sitting in the back of the Chinook, and all of a sudden I just see sky. And I become completely weightless in my seat. And all I could think is like, this is really gonna hurt. There's always that little bit, I think, in everybody that, you know, tells you to hold back and, you know, tells you to be cautious about certain things. And after that, I was like, screw being cautious and screw holding back any. It was just like, I'm going to do 100% what I want to do. I'm going to live how I want to live because it can all just end super fast. So why not do it the best way you can? I first got into making beats when I got a 16 track recorder and mixer and uh, I started to record my friends playing guitar and us playing drums and I got into you know mixing a band and putting it all in there and hearing how it sounded. That's when I started to realize that like I just I don't know I really loved doing it. It was just a lot of fun. There was something that clicked to it and I could be totally alone past hours and hours and you know I just loved every minute of it you know. I had been doing music my whole life, played drums, played piano, guitar and played in bands and stuff. But then when I got the MacBook Pro, I realized, hey, I can be my own one-man band and just layer after layer of all my own, you know, whatever I write and play every different instrument. So, well, I'd, you know, I was supposed to be doing my homework, but I'd be making beats and stuff in my barracks room at West Point. And then I carried that with me all the way, like while I was in the army up in Killeen, Texas. And uh, then I deployed to Afghanistan. I took actually this exact keyboard with me and, uh, brought it around with me every single place I went and made beats and all across Afghanistan. I actually worked with a civilian that rapped on the side. When we'd have free time, we'd get together and he'd come up with raps and we'd be sitting there in the tent and he'd be, you know, freestyling and stuff while I'd be making a beat live and stuff. So it was something cool. I think it was something that my soldiers could latch onto that like, hey, this guy's a real person. He's got real passions. He's not just like this stone cold military officer, you know, like you have to be a person for people to want to follow you. I just felt like I was kind of living separate lives within my own mind, you know, I get up every day and I have this military job, traveling, like, you know, surviving, and then you go home at night and, or, or go back to my tent or whenever and I like start to get creative and see what I could do with these beats. Being in the army and deploying was something I always wanted to do and I was proud to be doing it. But I knew it like my end game wasn't being in the army forever, it was making music. For me, music is communication and I, and I feel like you, it's so universal. As a producer, it's really cool to be able to help somebody get the sound they want to achieve, but then at the same time, like I want to achieve my own sound as well, and that's what I'm constantly crafting. You know, when I work with somebody, I really want them to have something to say. I want them to have a message. I want them to have like a, some like strong beliefs, and I want to I want to be with people who are looking to improve the world everywhere they go, and not just see what they can do for themselves.